Hey folks, today I want to show you how to play Molly Tuttle's opening guitar break that Golden Highway plays when they cover Jefferson Airplane's tune, White Rabbit. This is a really great excuse to talk about how to play over these long, sparse chord progressions like a jam band might do, but it's also a great excuse to talk about how to play over uncommon chords. Bluegrass musicians don't see these really long vamps over something like an F sharp major chord and a G major chord. And Molly's break is really a masterclass on both topics. And hey, we might even get some ideas for Halloween next month. Shout out to Joel Timmons as the rabbit and also to this cool dude. Oh, and also a big and important shout out to my friend Chris who scripted this video. He wrote the words that I'm saying right now. This is the first time we've had a collaborator on a script. So Chris is awesome, you should go follow him. It might seem to some of you that Jams and bluegrass are kind of a recent fad, but that's not true at all. They've been around for a long time. The band Old and in the Way, a supergroup founded in 1973 by Jerry Garcia, Peter Rowan, Vassar Clements, David Grisman, and John Kahn, was among the first bands to mix bluegrass and psychedelic elements. Yeah, yeah, whatever, Marcel, but what's the big deal? Playing over two chords over and over is easy, right? Well, I mean, kind of, but repetitive chord progressions can be really tricky to solo over. If you're used to jamming over fiddle tunes and grass standards, you might find yourself ripping all your Tony Rice riffs over the first two chords, and just like that, you're out of ideas. Well, you won't have to worry about that if you visit today's sponsor. Are your unfulfilled dreams of flat picking freedom keeping you up at night? Has your lack of progress in the practice room affected your relationship with friends and loved ones? Everyone can relate to these struggles, but it doesn't have to be that way, thanks to Guitar Club. With a growing library of over 170 videos, step-by-step -step courses, and live Q&A calls with your teacher, Hayes Griffin, Guitar Club is a one-stop shop for flat picking instruction. And did I mention you can access everything for only $19 a month? You might recognize the name Hayes Griffin from the Lessons with Marcel YouTube channel. He's got a bunch of guests appearances and uh, you know he teaches for me too he's got a lot of commentary he's a great guy but you might not know that Hayes is a professional musician college educator and content creator with over 20 years of experience in the industry to sign up head to hayesgriffin.club and click join now in the top top right corner. Also, don't forget to enter code Marcel at checkout to get your first month for only $1. So there's a couple things we have to learn before we get started here. This chord progression is only made of two chords, F sharp major and G major. So let's learn both of those chords up and down the neck like we were using the cage system. The first F sharp is going to be your basic F sharp bar chord. The G is one fret higher. Our next available chord is your C-shaped chord here at the 6th fret. The G is also 1 fret higher. Our next chord is the A-shaped chord at the 9th fret. The G, you guessed it, is 1 fret higher. These big chords have all the good notes, but they're not really comfortable to solo out of, so let's shrink these chords into triads using this Chris Eldridge exercise. All of these triads work, but some of them are easier to play than others. And the good news is, Molly shows us all the ones that work best. What Molly does play is as important as what she doesn't play. And seeing what world-class musicians do when the pressure is on raises the bar for our own playing, but also shows us what riffs have the best bang for your buck ratio. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't explore the triads that Molly didn't use. You should also explore those and see what you can create on your own. By the way, I always say this and no one ever listens to me, but please listen to the break again and try to hear all of the triads that we just talked about. Really, listening to it again is such a great way to make you a better musician and not just learn how to play the break, but like learn how to figure out similar breaks in the future. So go ahead, listen to that real quick.
So let's look at the first line here. I'm not gonna play the tremolo, we're gonna do it a little bit slower. It sounds like this. One, two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one, two. That would take us on to the next line. Now, all of that is a note for note quote from the original Jefferson Airplane recording, except for the tremolo. So we just played it like Jefferson Airplane. The tremolo is, a, is like a really nice way when you don't have the sustain of an electric guitar to keep that note going. It's not super common for bluegrass guitar players to use, but when used effectively, it's very nice. Now, I want you to notice all of the arpeggio moments that are being used here. Check out the first notes of the actual line. Just that. You can see we're talking about F sharp, F sharp arpeggio being added to that G major arpeggio. Right, that's how we get notes like four, five, four, five, right? The F sharp arpeggio had a bunch of fours. The G arpeggio or triad had a bunch of fifth fret notes. Now when we move up in the fourth measure, this is part of that G major triad. Right, it's part of that C shape, G major triad. And eventually she moves down one fret and guess where we are? We're in that F sharp, you know, C shape arpeggio. So diving into the second line, Molly changes directions. This was just an F sharp arpeggio down. She's gonna use the same chord shape, but instead she's gonna ascend. Right, so we're changing directions. Descending the arpeggio, climbing the arpeggio. And what do you think happens when the chord changes? We're going from an F sharp chord up to a G, and the G is only one fret higher. So what does Molly do to resolve it? She moves the whole chord shape, this whole triad or arpeggio, whatever you want to call it, just up one fret. I want to say that when she plays this lick, she does drag behind the beat a lot. I could have notated that rhythm with a bunch of, you know, added detail, but it seemed more appropriate to just write behind the beat. Guess what happens at the end of this line too? We get that, that triad up. She's going from a G chord to an F sharp now. She's going one fret lower. She just drops the whole shape down. So moving on to the next line, we've just resolved down to F sharp. Now we're gonna get this tremolo passage and it's that illusion of sustain again. It's really helping these chords grow and swell and be interesting on an instrument that has no option. If it was an electric guitar, I could turn my volume down and do a volume swell, but I can't here, right? Have to tremolo. And once again, these are just uh, double stops, but they're part of your greater triad shapes, right? This would be part of a greater triad. I'm just using two notes from that to make this double stop. This is probably the hardest part of the break, this little pickup right here. This is maybe a good time to talk about the pick strokes. Molly Tuttle is not adhering to a strict uh, pick stroke system here. It kind of seems like she's feeling the 16th note and so every one and two and is all down, 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 down and then any E or uh is up. So one E and a two E and a would be down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. You know, with some of the triplets, some of the syncopation and some of the tremolos and stuff, it's just not very consistent. In this phrase, she is playing down, up, down and then with two ups. A funny thing happened when I recorded my play along to the recording, I messed up that part in the same way that Molly does. So if you listen to that again, uh, you can hear us both beef that same moment. <laughs> so looking at the pickup, going into the next line, what do you think is gonna happen? I'm moving from a G chord to an F sharp. I just moved down one fret, right? We just keep cycling between these two sounds. So the very last line, I scoot down to resolve to the F sharp double stop. You know, I'm only playing one note, right? Still that same kind of shape in my brain. What do you think is gonna happen now? We descend the arpeggio, this doubled note motif, and then we ascend it again. We're going to a G chord, we scoot up one fret. It's, it's so simple when you explain it, but it sounds very good. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's a very simple concept that sounds great in execution.
just does this quick trill at the end to finish that and then a quick little chord stab. And that's the whole break. Now that we've done that whole break, let's do a quick play along with Molly with the tab up on the screen. Remember, you can go down to the settings wheel and you can change the playback speed if you want something maybe just a little bit easier to sink your teeth into. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. And Chris wrote for me, now get some Grateful Dead backing tracks and vibe out, which I refuse to say. That doesn't sound like me at all, Chris. <laughs> don't forget to go over to LessonsWithMarcel.com to get this tab for free. Also, don't forget to check out HayesGriffin.club for the Guitar Club. Coupon code Marcel will get you your first month for only $1. Hayes is an awesome collaborator. Uh, he's one of my favorite people. Definitely check them out, go support that. And I think that's all I got. So I'll see you all later. I hope you have a good one. <laughs>